Hi, it's Blue. Could an eclipse possibly trigger a sequence of earthly disasters? Just watch the news. It is already on April 8, 2024. The heavens above North America will be adorned by the 2024 eclipse. This astronomical wonder is not a random event, but a recurrence of a spectacle that last graced our skies seven years earlier in one. The 2017 eclipse, known as the Great American Eclipse, cast a shadow throughout the United States that traveled over seven cities named Salem. Now, after seven years, the 2024 solar eclipse is predicted to trace another path across the United States, slicing through several towns named Nineveh. It's an uncanny coincidence that the trajectories of these two eclipses form an X across the United States, intersecting at cities named Salem and Nineveh. For those acquainted with biblical lore, these names resonate with tales of prophecies and judgment. Salem, an ancient name for Jerusalem, a city marked by divine and devastating judgment. Nineveh, the infamous city that suffered divine judgment in the book of Jonah. Are these merely coincidences, or could they be celestial signs of impending judgment? But there's another key event to highlight. NASA plans to launch three rockets on the very day of the eclipse. Really, NASA? Why three and why on this day with so much going on? The boldness of it should frighten us. The path of both the eclipse and the rockets passing through the atmosphere during the eclipse is not just a spectacle, but a... It shows a major disregard of the spiritual energy at hand. The signs are all around us, but are we willing to discern the connection? The celestial, terrestrial, and now, the scientific actions that are converging on this day adds another layer of concern to this dramatic cosmic event. As we look towards the skies in anticipation and apprehension, let us not forget that the Earth too holds its share of mysteries. This summer, we are expecting a rare event that hasn't been seen since 1803. Trillions of cicadas are set to emerge from the Earth. For the first time, there will be two broods of hypersexual cicadas. There will be trillions. It reminds me of the locusts that emerge that are referenced in the Bible. There is more about these cicadas that are preparing to come in just a few short weeks from now. These cicadas are said to carry a fungal STD, a disease that causes their bodies to disintegrate while they continue their mating frenzy, oblivious to their impending doom. This phenomenon, as grim as it may sound, is a stark reflection of the celestial dance above us. The eclipse, the rockets, and now the cicadas, all converging on a single point in time. A time marked by death and rebirth, by science and spirituality, by the celestial and the terrestrial. This is another sign of the extraordinary times we are living in. The cicada emergence, like the impending eclipse, holds a mirror to our existence, forcing us to question the very nature of life, death, and our role in this cosmic play. As we watch these events unfold, we must ask ourselves, are we merely spectators or are we players in this grand spectacle of nature? While the heavens transform, the earth reflects its formidable dance, but how? Let's explore this, friends. Recently, the ground beneath us has been shaking. This is not only due to natural phenomena like earthquakes in Taiwan and New Jersey, but also man-made experiments. Ponder this, the CERN's Hadron Collider experiment in search of the elusive God particle, or antimatter. This experiment, although pioneering, carries potential risks that are as terrifying as they are intriguing. Some theorize that these experiments could unintentionally create multiple black holes. Do you know what black holes in space do? The swallow everything in its path. So if this happens with this project, could they too consume everything around them, leading to unimaginable destruction? Structures we perceived as immutable, like the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, have collapsed. Another unexpected tragic event dealing with water. The recent volcanic activity has increased too, so. As we await the 2024 eclipse this April 8th, we must question the implications. Could it be plausible that these celestial events are a forewarning of potential catastrophes to come? Could the upcoming eclipse 
casting shadows over towns named Nineveh and forming a chilling X across the United States be a signal of the potential chaos if numerous black holes were to be created by our scientific explorations. As the sun, our beacon of light in the heavens will be obscured and darkness will descend upon the land should we continue our quest for knowledge even when it endangers our very existence. Is it merely a celestial event or is it a sign, a warning of judgment, coincidence? Or could these be the precursors of a greater calamity? On the very same day as the 2024 eclipse, a significant event is set to take place in Israel. Yes, you heard it right. A red heifer, a rare, almost mythical creature, will be sacrificed in a ritual that carries deep historical and biblical significance. This red heifer was procured from a ranch in Texas, of all places, and is now in Israel being prepared for the ceremonial sacrifice. But why a red heifer? In Numbers 19, the Bible speaks of a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke. Its ashes, when mixed with water, are used for ritual purification of those who have come into contact with the corpse. This process is believed to cleanse the impure, bridging the gap between the physical world and the spiritual realm. And now, with the celestial dance of the eclipse unfolding in the heavens and the earth trembling beneath our feet, this ritual takes on a profound significance. The fact that this happens on April 8th, the day of the 2024 solar eclipse, cannot be ignored. Could this be another sign, another link in the chain of events leading to something bigger? Could the heavens be aligning with the earthly rituals, underscoring a divine message? As we watch the skies darken and the red heifer prepare for its final journey, we are left with more questions than answers. Perhaps these are not mere coincidences. Perhaps they are signs, messages from the universe waiting for us to decipher. As we approach this remarkable event, let us remember the lessons of the past and look to the future with hope and caution. Our ancestors have witnessed these signs before and have left us with wisdom to navigate these celestial events. The book of Genesis 1.14 states, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. This wisdom has been passed down to us, and we must heed these signs now more than ever. In our modern world, we often disregard the power of the universe and the mysteries it holds. We tend to take the universe's wonders for granted, not understanding the full extent of their impact on our lives. This eclipse is not just a spectacle for us to marvel at. It is a sign, a call from the universe, urging us to be humble. It's a reminder that there are forces beyond our understanding, forces that we need to respect. So as we prepare for this eclipse, let's not just equip ourselves with protective eyewear. In fact, you should really just stay at home. Let's equip ourselves with humility and caution. There is too much energy at play for us not to, especially with the conjunction of many planets, at the same time scheduled to also occur on the very same day of the eclipse. Let's remember that we are part of a vast universe, an intricate system of celestial bodies that influence our lives in ways we may not fully comprehend. And as we close this chapter, let's remember to stay connected. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I need you all to share this with your loved ones if you care. Stay safe, stay informed, and remember, we're all in this together. For spiritual, celestial, and ancestral support, you can always connect with me by visiting my website, theempressspeaks.com. And remember, the universe is not just something we observe, it's something we're a part of.